Unopposed bombing raids sent defenseless civilians fleeing in stark terror. wanted war. They had done everything to avoid it. Hoping they could escape the Nazi scourge, they had compromised and tragically failed to unite with the other democracies. And now they faced the scourge defenseless and alone. For before the Allies could come to their aid, the Germans were in control of all principal ports. Regardless of this, British, French, and Polish contingents plunged in and made several landings along the Norwegian coast. They landed forces north and south of Trondheim and attempted an encircling movement on the city under constant, heavy, and almost entirely unopposed air attack. Well, the scene of action was out of range of British fighter planes. So they brought up aircraft carriers. But these are at a disadvantage when opposed by land-based planes. The Allies, therefore, were badly battered from the air. Finally, suffering heavy losses, they withdrew from a hopeless situation. Further to the north, at Narvik, they met with better success, inflicting heavy naval losses on the Nazis. landings and held the town for nearly two months. Incidentally, they also took their first prisoners of the present war. And again, the Nazis' overwhelming air superiority proved a deciding factor. And the Allies were forced to withdraw under terrific air bombardment. were left with their quizlings, their ruins, their dead. Even though six months before Hitler had said, Germany never had any conflict with the northern states and has none today. The Norwegians will not forget. And Hitler, Hitler had another victory. He had hijacked two more countries. The world wondered and sometimes marveled at this man's efficiency. Gangster Dillinger was efficient, too. When a man or a nation throws away all regard for the laws of God and man, he is bound at first to be more efficient than his victims. Society had a police force to deal with Gangster Dillinger, but it had no police force to deal with Gangster Hitler. So he clubbed Norway into submission and got what he wanted, bases for use against Britain. Now he had the northern claw of an enormous pincer movement. A drive through France would give him the southern claw. Blockade by U-boats coupled with mass bombing attacks would weaken the British for final invasion. Then, with Britain gone, Germany could reach out in all directions for world conquest.
His next move must obviously be through France to get his southern claw. Through France. How was she to face the onslaught? These scenes are ancient history. They occurred in 1914. The German armies, without warning, had smashed across neutral Belgium, invaded France, reached the River Marne only a few miles from Paris. Out of the French capital poured the French reserves, riding out to battle the enemy in every vehicle that could move. The famous taxicab army. Note well, it was riding out to battle. In the center of the French line stood the 9th French Army, commanded by a then comparatively unknown general. On September 5, 1914, he is reputed to have said, my right is driven in, my center is giving way. The situation is excellent. I attack. German onslaught was checked, and Paris was saved. That comparatively unknown general later became commander-in-chief of all the Allied armies and presided at the signing of the armistice with the defeated Germans on November 11, 1918. To this general, the French people erected a monument. To Marshal Ferdinand Foch, whose motto was, attack, always attack. Still later, the war-weary French people erected another monument. This one to a minister of war, André Maginot. Between the ideas symbolized by these two statues may well lie the military story of the fall of a great nation. In Foch's time, the proud spirit of France demanded nothing less than victory and placed its faith in the attack. In Maginot's time, the spirit no longer proud asked only to avoid defeat and placed its faith in concrete. So the French built the mighty chain of fortresses called the Maginot Line. These tremendous bastions were built deep into the French land. They were connected by underground passages and railways guarding France's eastern borders facing Germany. <laughs> 